with the spread of VHD, rabbit numbers sort of plummeted all around a lot of the local farms. But they're just starting to recover a little bit now and we've got little pockets of rabbits where numbers are starting to build up again. Um, one of the little bits of ground I've got here uh, has got quite a few coming out along a hedgerow here and the farmers asked me if I would just um, thin them out a little bit. So I'm going to head out this morning and just see if we can knock one or two over from one of my favourite shooting spots. one of my favourite shooting spots this. It's an old water tower and it probably sits about 20-25 foot off the ground and it gives a brilliant view straight down along this hedgerow which is quite good for rabbits and the occasional fox. So I do like to sit up here and knock over a bunny or two and uh, I'm hoping that there'll be a few out and about this morning. I've already seen a couple and they're uh, a little bit further down the hedgerow there but well any luck, we'll get one or two come out a bit closer. So I've got my 2-2LR with me this morning. I've actually just had this Cerakoted because uh, I took it out in the rain and uh, I just, well, I, long and short of it was I didn't draw it off properly and it marked the action and the barrel. So um, I had to get something done with it. And uh, I took it to Mike at MW Guns uh, down in Sussex and he was able to, to sort that out, um, clean it all up and cerakote it for me, made a real nice job of it and well, turn it around in about a week for me and at a good price too, so I'm very pleased with that. I've got the Element Titan 3 to 18 set on the top there, really good scope that, and that's held on there with, as usual, sports match mounts. I've got it zeroed at 50 metres, and uh, I've got the drops pretty much squared away on the ballistics, uh, the Element Ballistics app as well. So hopefully if anything comes out a little bit further we should be able to stretch the range a little bit. Well, I'm using the PAR 007 night vision add-on because it's also got a colour day screen so it's quite handy just to put on the back of the scope and record through. So hopefully I can get some nice through the scope footage for you. He's out at 90 metres, so about 100 yards. And let's have a quick look at the app. Uh, was that really neat? I know it's about 6 m away. Uh, so metres, yeah, it's only 6.5. That's the first one down. It's a nice still morning this morning, so I haven't got to allow anything for the windage, which is a big, a big help with the two-two because the wind does definitely push it around a little bit. Go 
got another one at 140 metres. A little bit further this time. That's telling me 14.25 MOA. Right, and we've got another one just come out at 110. So, 110, and that's telling me eight and a half MOA. That's bunny number three down. Mm. All right, so we've got another one at 120. 120 meters, so that's about 130 yards. 20, so 10.25 I think the bunnies have wised up a little bit now. Doesn't seem to be any more coming out. Morning's knocking on a little bit. So I'll pop back out tonight with the scent of fire and have a look, see if we can find a fox or maybe a deer. Well, this evening I've come down to this bit of ground. It's only quite a small bit of ground this, but it's a lovely bit of ground. Lots of woodland and some small open fields. Now I'm looking for a, uh, a fallow buck if I can bump into one for last light. Failing that, there's quite a few foxes on here, so I'm going to hang around after dark and see if I can knock one of them over. So I'm using the Mauser M12 in 243, and on that I've got mounted a Hick Micro Alpex, and I'm using the Sportsmatch one piece quick release mounts, which is great because it means I can use a day scope with this rifle and just chop and change between them. I'm also using the Recon tripod from Scott Country. This is the CT1 model. And along with that, I'm also using the Pulsar Mergers. These are the XP50s, LRFs. So laser range finding thermal binos. Brilliant for spotting. So we put a few rounds in the magazine and then have a little walk around.
That was a great start to the evening. I've literally just walked down the first field and um, <clears throat> I spotted a deer moving around just in these trees, just to my left here. And then uh, I thought it was a row at first and it stepped out just out of the cover there. And I could see it was a munjack, so I quickly got on that and um, got that. So it's, uh, it ran, but it, I saw it in the thermal. It only ran to the trees just at the bottom of the field there and it's gone over, so it's laying in there dead. Right, well, uh, we'll come down and um, have a look and see if we can find a fox. It's probably just about, I mean, it's right on last light now, so, um, yeah, I don't think we're going to have much more luck with any, any deer, but I'm happy with that. That's brilliant, and go straight in the freezer. So annoyingly then, I was literally just about to go and pick this munjack up walking down to the trees there and a fox came through from the next field. Now bear in mind, not two minutes ago I've just fired a shot with the 243 and that fox was still coming in, he was probably 40-50 yards away from me but I couldn't see him because I didn't have the IR on the scope and it's just a little bit too dark now to uh, to sort of pick him out against the um, against the trees in, the, uh, in front of me there. Stick the IR on now. So I'm using a PBIR infrared illuminator on there, brilliant with the LPX. Well, that's that Monty all cleaned out. Nice little buck that. I'm going to um, take the guts and just put them in the next field and uh, hopefully that might draw a fox in. It's a good little spot. This, this where I am at the moment, this little crossroads if you like, it's where a few hedges at the bottom of the field all just join and a bit of tree line and that. And um, I've seen foxes here the last couple of times I've been down and again this evening so I think it's definitely worth putting a bit of bait out and uh, standing back and just see what comes in. I'm going to leave the whole carcass there along with the guts and hopefully that might pull a fox in. Right, let's go back a bit and find somewhere good to wait. Right, I found myself a pretty decent spot here. Just back along the tree line I've got a little bit of uh, overhanging branch that hangs down just in front of me. Um, but I've already checked and the IR doesn't bounce back off it, which should be clear down the side of it. It's about 100 yards to the uh, to the bait, so it's perfect sort of foxing range. Hopefully we'll get something comes wandering in. I might try giving it a squeak in a minute too, but we'll just let things settle down for a little bit first and just see if anything comes in. Now it's stopped raining and um, Everything seems to be coming out. Uh, I've already seen a fox and I've seen quite a lot of fallow deer around as well. In fact, just after dark there was a, uh, there was a fallow in the uh, field just as I was cleaning out that, uh, that munjack. So there's definitely, definitely a few about on here.
Well, hopefully I managed to get that on video. I pressed the wrong button, I pressed the power button now, and I just, it was still recording, so I'm hoping that will save, or maybe the uh, pre-record will save. I had that set, so hopefully we've got that footage. But anyway, um, I spotted a fox just coming out of the wood down there. And so I'm walking along the tree line here, just looking at that, trying to see exactly where it was in there. And uh, I couldn't quite pick it out. And I glanced around the thermal, and it was coming down the track in front of me. So obviously it got through the long grass, just in front, unseen, and come out on the track. And we had that kind of Mexican standoff where we both look at each other and go. And uh, anyway, he decided he didn't like what he was seeing. Can't really blame him. But anyway, he turned around and he went, back down the track um, so I quickly got the rifle up on the sticks there and looked around and he was making his way back to the woods so I managed to swing round and just uh, just stop him with a just with a little um, little shout or something I can't remember now but just a little noise just enough to stop him and get him to look round and then uh, just put a quick snapshot onto the side of him and put him down so I'm pleased with that I managed to finally get a fox as soon as been uh, hunting around everywhere this evening. I had uh, the bait out, as uh, as you saw back there, the, um, the guts out of the deer, but uh, after sort of an hour probably of standing there waiting, and the rain started to come in, and so I thought, well, I'll just uh, go walk about for a bit, and yeah, first field, straight, straight, you know, straight along here, bumped into a fox, so yeah, happy days, right, well. We'll go and pick him up, have a look, see if that was a dog or a vixen, and uh, then we'll, I think we'll probably call it a night. Right, well that's a vixen. That was about, uh, probably about 80 yards away, 70, 80 yards, somewhere about that. So, yeah, pleased to have got that, so that just about Rounds the evening off, I think. The, uh, as you can see, the rain's started coming in. So that's me done for tonight. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for watching.